Hello everybody! My last video that Cancer Killing Gaming was pretty well received, which was good because it was something I had a lot of fun making. This video will be pretty similar to that, hopefully a bit more refined and easier to watch and listen to. This isn't a direct continuation of that video, which is something I still need to make, but it does cover a very recent subject that I did touch on in that video. The subject is the recent arrival of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. So Modern Warfare 3 is out, and the only way you wouldn't know that is if you were some mountain man living miles away from civilization. It's been out for a few days now, and in that time frame, I've noticed a lot of videos popping up all over YouTube about how this game is shit because it's so similar to Modern Warfare 2, it's like they changed nothing. All I can say to you is, if you didn't notice before that Activision was trying to sell substandard products at full price, <laughs> sorry. Most gamers have known for years that Activision was milking the Call of Duty franchise to death. I'd be willing to venture a guess that most of the sales numbers for the Call of Duty series come from people who primarily play Call of Duty, which is to say, almost nothing else. However, I've really only heard the fans complain about the lack of improvements, and to a larger extent, all the new issues popping up. The graphics are from 2007, numerous people are reporting serious connection issues, including lag and being flat out unable to join a game, and the map design is by far the worst in the series. With each new entry, the maps keep getting smaller and smaller. It's not that the box the maps are built in is getting smaller, it's the fact that with so many corridor-based maps, you're in a constant state of claustrophobia. With all the grenade jokes frequently kicked around about the series, you must realize that there is some truth to them. If you hear footsteps on the other side of a wall and bounce a grenade off a corner, you're pretty much guaranteed to get a kill. So what else is there about this game? Nothing, really. Many people have been able to either avoid or ignore these flaws and enjoy themselves. And you know what? That's completely fine. My goal here today is not to get people to stop enjoying themselves, but rather to educate them on what exactly it is they're playing and who is involved in the making of it. Let's take a look at pricing. Right off the bat, the game is $60, and some countries pay even more. Most people would agree that's a pretty steep price for a game. Most people, that is, except the Call of Duty fans. The only reason Activision charges so much for the games is because they know they can get away with it, because they know their audience, and it's comprised of people who will continue to buy each new entry until Activision kills off the series. And if you really don't think that will happen, I've got five words for you. Tony Hawk and Guitar Hero. When Call of Duty stops making a substantial profit, they're going to drop the series like a rock. They've done it before. The already ridiculous starting fee of $60 is made even worse by the fact that all the DLCs are $15, and unless you buy them, you're locked out of certain playlists. Let me ask you something. Do you buy a game to get a game? It may seem like a silly question, but let's take a look at another. Do you buy a game to get part of a game and have the rest of it sold back to you unless you want some of the part you already own to be locked out? It's a bit like buying an apple, only you're given a few slices. The salesman then tells you that if you want the entirety of the apple, your two options are A, spend $15 on each new slice of apple until you have the whole thing, or B, wait a year until the special edition golden apple comes out fully intact and slightly cheaper. Does that seem fair? You might think it sounds like a wiser decision to wait a year for the golden apple, but the problem with that is by the time it's out, everybody will have moved to the next version of the apple, and you don't want to feel left out so you run out and buy the new apple like a fucking idiot. That is not an accident or coincidence, not by any means. Call of Duty is an annual series, having one game around the same time each year. They do this because they know each entry will rake in about as much as the last. You have to admit, that's kind of a shifty business practice. Another thing I'd like to bring up is what happened to Infinity Ward, developers of Call of Duty 4 and Modern Warfare 2. In March of last year, the shitstorm of the century occurred when Jason West, president, and Vince Zampella, CEO, were fired from Infinity Ward. The reason listed by Activision was breaches of contract and insubordination, alleging they had violated their contracts by seeking to start an independent studio, and purposefully slowing the production of games while working for the Santa Monica-based publisher. In a lawsuit filed two days later, the duo said Activision had fired them to avoid paying millions of dollars in royalties owed on November's Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, which has sold about 20 million units and generated an estimated $1.3 billion. Over a billion dollars, and they're withholding millions from a couple of guys. This is the company you're buying your games from. It is worth noting, however, that the pair have formed a new company, aptly named Respawn Entertainment. Currently, they're being funded by... Wait a minute, let me take a closer look at this. EA. <laughs> Did they really think that EA would treat them any better? <laughs> We'll get to EA in a minute. So why do I bring up this incident? Well, for one, I like to call it Activision whenever possible. 
Primarily, though, I bring this up because of what followed their firing. When they were forced out of the company, many other employees left to follow, either to work at Respawn or to pursue other ventures. These weren't exactly new recruits, though. Many of the people who left of their own accord were senior members who had been with the company for years. From the latest number I can get, the total number of employees who left, including Weston Zampella, totals up to 48. Don't take my word for it, though. Just do a Google search for who's left at Infinity Ward. Now, the reason I bring that up, that being the number of people who left, is that it could provide an explanation as to why Modern Warfare 3 is so bad. These were people who helped shape the franchise into the mammoth that it is today. With their influence now absent, it's not really hard to see why Modern Warfare 3 wasn't much different from the second. 3 is being handled by people without the vision those employees had, and are trying to mimic it. Very poorly, may I add. So, with the overpricing of the base game, DLC, the firing of Weston Zampella, the change in management it brought on, the alleged holding of millions of dollars, the fate met by a series Activision handled in the past, the shrinking maps, the numerous problems Modern Warfare 3 is suffering from, and the obviously decreasing effort, which will only get worse, ask yourself one last question. Do you even want to buy these games anymore? Well, if you have any sort of integrity, you'll likely say no. The problem then becomes, but how will I get my Call of Duty fix? Is there some other game I could go to, like Battlefield 3? Short answer, no. Long answer, stay the fuck away from Battlefield 3. It has its fair share of issues as well, and with EA trying to be the next Activision, you shouldn't contribute to that. However, you don't have to go to another game. There is a simple solution that would allow you to play each new entry in the Call of Duty series without having to give a cent to Activision. Ready for it? Drum roll. Piracy! Yes, this is a very heated debate in the gaming community. However, in a situation like this, piracy is one of the only good options. If you don't want to support Activision, you can flat not buy their games. If you don't want to support Activision, but still want to play their games whenever you like, pirate them. In doing so, Activision isn't seeing a penny, and you're still able to enjoy yourself with a game you love so much. Everybody wins. Except for Activision, but they don't deserve to win. Piracy is a big issue, and it's a topic of its own for another day. Rest assured, I'm not one of those pirate-everything-fuck-the-man people. I believe you should give your money to developers and publishers who prove they actually care about video games, not just money. <coughs> I believe you shouldn't give your money to companies who value profit over making a good game. <coughs> Pirating a game is understandable in certain cases. This is one of those cases. If you disagree with me, you can leave a comment or a video response. And if you think I'm trying to whore out comments by saying that, then put it in a PM. Comments are better, though, because this issue is still very much open for discussion. I don't really have an ending for this video, so I think I'll just take this opportunity to say, fuck Activision for what they did to video games, and fuck anyone who tried to copy them. Thank you for your time.